Don't. Migrants are breaking down fences and storming the Eurotunnel rail terminal, jumping onto trains and trucks bound for Britain. Eurotunnel, the group that operates the Channel Tunnel, says it's caught more than 37,000 migrants attempting the crossing since the beginning of the year. This clandestine activity is happening all over Calais, all night long, every single day of the year. Hundreds gathering groups along roads or railways, hoping to catch a UK-bound truck or train traveling in the tunnel under the English Channel. It's blatant. It's in broad daylight. Hello, people of England. We would like to say hi and welcome. Thank the people of England. Actually, they have brought lots of foods, chocolates, sweets, and would like to thank you guys for all these things. And my message to all people in England that you're really kind, you're really helpful. Uh, Being robbed at knife point by migrants here is becoming an increasing occupational hazard. They start to go for my pockets, and then I'm pinned against the wall. Um, one of them has a blade and starts cutting at my jacket, um, and one of them tries to put something in my mouth, a napkin or something like that, trying to be quiet. Uh, eventually, I break free. I find safety um, back towards the entrance with some volunteers uh, who say, this is um, it's like increasingly, increasingly happening. Suddenly, out of nowhere, Three people jumped on me. I had not seen these people coming. I was not filming them. I don't know where they were coming from. And they suddenly jumped on me. It all went very quickly. What concerns me is this is completely unpoliced space. Nobody knows who's here. And if you look behind me, the people on the sofa are covering up their faces. They don't want to be seen. There could be all sorts of reasons. Ce camp improvisé est situé juste en dessous de la station de métro Stalingrad. Ici, certains réfugiés sont passés par la jungle de Calais. Do you think there are any people from Dash here? Of course, yeah. In this camp? In the jungle, you mean? Yeah. In the jungle, half, yeah, of course, half. The people here. We don't know which one is a dash, which one is a right person. It's a whole hum mushkila, bilkale. Bilkale, whole hum nafsil dash, bilkale. Well, aren't you helping migrants get to the UK? Absolutely, I am. Yeah, why? Why wouldn't I? We may be facilitating a um, a rebellion at some points. Essentially, we distribute supplies which. Um, facilitate people to jump fences. Let them in! 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 We're going to play with the chairs and we're not going to get out of here. Every hour they're going to get out of here. We were in Syria when we were all the people. My mother came to me from the chairs and she was going to get out of here. Yeah. Okay. How did you do that? This is a war, huh? In Syria. كنت عم بلعب برا عم اجا اجاني الجيش قال لي تعال اشتري لك شيء عم رحت عم خطفوني عم داسوا علي بالسياره ما بعرف شو بدي اقول له انا ضايع هون مع امي والله هنا كودينا المطبخ بياكلوا فينا ما بيسووا لك طيب واكلهم هنا وانت لك الدجاج زي الورق هذه وجبه واحده في اليوم سوينا الحمام هنا ممكن يجي يصوره Fadl was a student in Sudan, but was forced to flee in 2011. After years stuck in Libya, he arrived in the jungle six months ago. Conditions here are hard, but everywhere there are signs of a community striving to create something like a normal life. Cafes and food shops have opened, Spotting a demand for bicycles, 
a friend of Farrell's who is a car mechanic in Sudan, has set up the camp's own bike and rental repair service. This shack, built out of pallets, will soon be a school. And here will be teacher table. Here we'll put one blackboard. You have window here. And uh, we try our best, you know. Even as the camp becomes permanent, in the jungle, everything is transient. It seems that the um, word has got around camp that there's a traffic jam building on the motorway that runs across the top of the camp. And it's caused quite a lot of interest. A lot of the people are now running up, moving up towards the, the lorries to see if they can get on the back. Migrants regularly complain about heavy-handed treatment by the police. Officers frequently use pepper spray. And funded with millions of pounds of British money, the authorities' other main response is to step up security. Yesterday we were here and um, there were groups of migrants intermittently running up this bank from the camp, trying to get past the police, onto the motorway and onto the back of lorries. Today we've come back and we found that the authorities are hastily erecting what looks like a fairly intimidating fence. It's going to run presumably from where you can see now all the way along here up the side of the motorway, closing off the camp with barbed wire on the top of it. Obviously the idea is to try and stop migrants getting up this bank and onto the motorway and onto the lorries. This is when we meet eight-year-old Khalid, the Syrian boy with a badly injured leg. He had just arrived with his mother. <laughs> Three years ago, Khaled and his mother fled their home city of Aleppo, which has been devastated by the war. Since then, they have moved from country to country, trying to find somewhere to settle and to get treatment for Khaled's leg. The mood around the camp, though, is gloomy. Word is spreading that several people have died trying to get onto trains and lorries. Fadil, still waiting for news of his asylum claim, is worried about the risks people are taking. We've been told that there's um, a part of the cemetery where migrants are buried if their families or friends can't afford to get their bodies home. And then about 10 minutes ago, we were told that uh, there's been a, a baby, an unborn baby that um, died when, her, when its mother fell off, the, fell off a lorry a few days ago and she had a miscarriage. The mother has disappeared and only two officials and two grave diggers are present. We are asked not to film the burial. Samir was one of at least six who have died in recent weeks. We arrive back at the camp and find Khaled's tent empty. By chance, we catch up with them as they are setting off. They have a two-hour walk to the Eurotunnel terminal. Then they have to avoid police and try and break into a lorry or jump onto a moving train. Khalid dream after three years a dream in the UK. And why UK, Khalid? Let's return your My school and my passport and my nationality <laughs> and my to make my leg. I love so much UK. Hilmi, yani Hilmi, Hilmi, ini ana shuf ibni am yimshi mnih, urjlo mafia tashawa, u aad bi madrasto, maris hayatu tabi. Hasis bas, shuf dia fakir. Ham bela ishahnat yalla amdroha britania ba fakir ham timfud inna, ma am timfud. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Take care. Other people in their group had become nervous and we were asked to stop filming. You've got to wish them good luck, I suppose, haven't you? It's a lot to ask of a little boy to go walk two hours and then trying to get on a moving train. Khaled and his mother, though, had to abandon their attempt. His leg was hurting too much to walk any further. I'm sorry, 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 I'm
كم ليش هيك بريطانيا عم ليش هيك بريطانيا و... <تصفيق> وبدي <تصفيق> اشتكي <تصفيق> وبدي اشتكي للملكه اقول للملكه تبع بريطانيا ومن هذا الحكي كثير تازمت نفسيته Khalid and his mother are stuck in a familiar trap. They've been told those Syrians who do make it to Britain are granted asylum. The challenge is how to get there. ما أصلاً هن عم بيسكروا كل الطرق. يعني هن already بدهن يانا وبيرحبوا فينا بس بنفس الوقت ما بيخلونا نوصل بسهولة. Many people here aren't that friendly and I describe some of them quite frankly as downright hostile and one of the reasons is because they're just really sick and tired of the media and everybody coming in here and involving themselves in their lives. Another reason is this collective experience of trauma that many people are already suffering from the countries they came and uh, this general distrust I suppose of outsiders. Ashraf, who is a refugee from Sudan, explains that life in the jungle has a maddening effect on its residents. Some have taken to drinking and drugs to cope. Others are shells of who they were. A lot of them have shock. Is this Europe? A lot of them, they don't know that. And the idea in their mind, when they, when they try to come here, it's different from this. Some people come here that they will, when they come soon, they get house, job, and they get their family. No, it may take one year, two years.